December is continuing. Obviously, that's a dumb way to start this, but as the season continues on, I wanted to do videos that were obviously in spirit with the holiday seasons. I wanted to find something that was different than what I've been doing. I feel like it's been forever since we've talked about something new and have just been rehashing old creators that we've taken a look at, which isn't bad necessarily, but I wanted to, you know, break up the monotony by doing something new. And so I was sitting there racking my brain trying to think of, you know, TV shows and Christmas specials and things like that that we could talk about. And I don't know why, but my brain went to a very specific place. In my childhood in the early 2000s, probably when I was around like five or six years old, there was a specific cable provider that existed for a very, well, I guess calling a Christian audience isn't necessarily niche, but it existed for a specific demographic, that being, as I said, Christians. The provider was named Sky Angel, and it essentially compiled all these different existing Christian programs, movies, TV shows, and put them all into one cable bundle. And it had the typical stuff of, you know, a kid's channel, a movie channel. There were quite a few different channels throughout the entire package. Mind you, I'm not going to remember it that well because I was in the single digit ages. I remember a few of the shows that aired and they always stuck with me. Certainly my favorite show on the network, the one that has stuck with me for ages that is almost lost media at this point was a show called Critter Gitters. It wasn't a particularly, as far as I remember, Christian show. It was just a family-friendly show, and so they bought the airing rights to that and put it on the network. It was a basic, like, sitcom that was a Crap Brother ripoff where you had a bunch of kids going around and learning about different animals and things like that, but it was probably my first introduction to the world of cryptids. Why am I bringing this up? I don't know, because we're not talking about that show today. The show we're talking about today is The Gospel Bill Show. Take old-timey TV westerns and a mega church pastor, mash them together, and you have The Gospel Bill Show. It was a show that ran from 1981 to 1993, if you can believe it, albeit it only had a 65-episode run. The show did later receive a new name, so I don't know if the total episode count is the run of the show in total or just under the name of The Gospel Bill Show. Nonetheless, the show was produced by Willie George Industries. Willie George George being the star actor and pastor of the megachurch foundation that produced it. For whatever reason, my dumbass kid self thought that because the name Bill was in the title, that the actor playing the titular Gospel Bill was Bill Gaither of the Gaither Foundation. He's another kind of mega church guy, but leaning more so into the musical side of things. The name may sound familiar if you are familiar with the animated atrocity that is Gaither's Pond. I keep going off on side tangents here. What I mean to say with all of this is today we are going to be looking at an episode of the Gospel Bill show titled The Christmas That Almost Wasn't. Because, you know, Christmas, Christianity, I'm racking my brain for new content ideas. Why not? I don't know if this is even going to be a good video, so let's find out together. This is the Gospel Bill Show, the Christmas that almost wasn't. Before we begin, as always, make sure to like and subscribe. We're trying to reach 5k as our next sub goal, so we're seeing how quick we can hit that next milestone. Thanks for all your support. It's the Gospel Bill Show. Featuring Gospel Bill. The Gospel Bill Show is a basic, family-friendly-ish Western. I remember there being, like, gunfights and stuff like that on the show. I could be misremembering completely. Opening up the show, we get, uh, like, brief 15-second-ish preview of what's to come, and... Next on the Gospel Bill Show. But Mr. Bendler, what are we doing at this old place? We're gonna hold this kid here till I can collect that ransom money. Be still, you little brat. Be still. My goodness, we're gonna make some money off of this kid. <laughs> that's right, Mr. Bendler, that's right. Well, that's a hell of a preview. Then, of course, is the theme song. It's 
It's the Gospel Bill Show. God, that music takes me back. Uh, you gotta admit, it's kind of a catchy theme. Just that little underlying saxophone throughout the entirety. Featuring Gospel Bill. His sidekick, Nicodemus. What, what, what was his name? Nicodemus. I I'm not sure I'm allowed to repeat that. <laughs> I have some friends I need to call, I'll get back to you on that. So we go through a list of all the characters that are in the show. Oddly enough, unlike most title sequences, they don't list the actor's name underneath the character, which I think as a kid, that definitely helped, like, solidify the entire facade of it all being real. And I'd be uh, sorely remiss if I forgot to mention who my favorite character as a kid was. And yes, that was, of course... Good old Elmer Barnes. Elmer Barnes, a man who is, quote, portrayed as somewhat mentally challenged. It's definitely 1980 show. <laughs> the sets and the props are pretty well done. I mean, it did have the funding of a mega church behind it. So, I mean, they got money to spare. I, uh, let's be honest. So we go through the setup of the episode in this scene where Charlie McIntosh, one of the local kids and his mom received a $50,000 inheritance from his mom's dead uncle, who was a railroad tycoon. Slanta? Well, hi, Charlie. How you doing? Good. Can I get you something? Yeah, I'd like some licorice. Okay, you want one or two pieces? No, I like all of it. A plot setup that does not feel out of place in a time period piece like this. What I want to know is, where does that abyssal door lead to? Why, Charlie, that'll cost five dollars. There you go. Now, Charlie, where did you get that kind of money? The producer out back handed it to me. Me and my mom just inherited $50,000. $50,000? Yeah, let's let's linger on that shot just just a little bit too long. Me and my mom just inherited $50,000. Cut. 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 Please? Unfortunately, our bad guy of the entire series, Luther Bedlow and his henchmen that I do not remember the name of, are on the prowl for some quick ways to make money and introduced in the most comedically perfect way that you can introduce two bad guys in a children's show. Well, it looks like it's another beautiful day in Dry Gulch, Mr. Bidlow. Shut up! You know I don't like beautiful days. <laughs> how long were they just... How long were they just sitting behind that barn door, staring at the backside of the door before they popped up? What were they doing down there? Look at that. It looks like Christmas time. Look at all those people buying. Be quiet. I don't like Christmas either. Christmas. Christmas smish -mish. It may just be me because this is a very, very niche reference, but Luther Bedlow here looks like Robert Zadar's character from Cyber Kids. Tell me I'm wrong. And realizing now what I did not realize as a kid, Bedlow was played by Willie George as well. So he plays the main character and the main villain. Why everybody's buying each other presents and families are getting together and love is all over everywhere. I hate every minute of it. That's what I hate. Every minute of it. Bedlow and his little compatriot here, I genuinely don't remember his name, and I just looked it up like five seconds ago, are in the know about Charlie's family making money. Being an old Western show, they kidnap him. Now, rumor has it that his rich Uncle Pete, you know the railroad tycoon? Yes, sir. Just passed away, and when he did, he left $50,000 to that little critter and his mother. $50,000? Mm -hmm. It's worth pointing out, that character is not Elmer Barnes. That is just another character who is portrayed as... Yeah. Santa Claus is gonna be real good to us this Christmas. Santa Claus? <laughs> I love Santa Claus! Would you be quiet? The Gospel Bill Show continues after this. Oh. 
Oh, good lord, I forgot about these. So, not even three minutes into the full episode, we get what actually makes up a good majority of the Gospel Bill show, which is a side story with puppets. One of them is named Eugene. I don't remember the other one. They're a brother and sister, I think. Their side stories take up at least two-thirds of the episode, leaving very little time for the actual main show to take place. I will admit that it was cool that they had segments showcasing different animals in almost every episode, but otherwise these side stories are just a complete interruption for the flow of the narrative. And they probably did it because let's be honest, most kids barring weirdos like me aren't going to sit down and watch a western for 27 minutes. So they got to throw in the colorful puppet characters in order to keep their interest and retain them for a little while longer. But for the sake of this video, we're skipping completely over those segments. I will, as a Christmas gift to you all, let you look at the grizzly bears for a moment. Grizzly bears are among the most dangerous animals in North America. Although they eat fish and other small animals, grizzly bears will attack human beings. Back to the main show, Bedlow and his henchmen kidnap Charlie and Bill finds out about it. <laughs> well, hello, Charlie. How you doing? Hey, I got a good friend I want you to come over here and meet. Just step right over here, just right over here. A uh, good friend of mine, uh, uh, Mr. Luther Bedlow. This is Charlie McIntosh. Mr. McIntosh, this is Mr. Luther Bedlow. Well, pleased to meet you there, sonny boy. Nice to meet you, sir. <laughs> I don't know at what point in the series this episode was chronologically, if it even had, like, some sort of continuity. Charlie should know who this is. Bedlow is like the boogeyman of Dry Gulch. He's the main villain. He's the masked rider. He's the Blackbeard of Dry Gulch. Editing Noah here. Hey, uh, past me, why the hell could you not think of any more relevant examples? Blackbeard? Really? Why not, like, Billy the Kid? Come on. He has a name for himself because he commits a different crime in, like, every episode. That's like taking some kid now and going up, Hey, this is my friend, Ted Bundy. Well, I'll tell you, you're just a right, proper-looking young lad. You certainly are. Now, I've been hearing some stories about you and your mama. Oh, good things, of course, but I just had to come for myself and just ask you if they was for true or not. <laughs> uh hey, Willie, don't forget to puff on your cigar a little bit. Huh? Oh. <laughs> That good? Yeah, whatever. It's true, all right. We got $50,000 from our Uncle Pete. Oh, that's just wonderful. Just wonderful. <laughs> Mr. Lidlow, Mr. Bidlow, what about the licorice? Yeah, don't scream or nothing, Charlie. Just let him pick you up. After Charlie gets kidnapped, Nicodemus comes into the sheriff's office and tells Bill what happened. Well, first he tells Bill that Charlie's mom is rich. And then he's like, oh, by the way, Charlie was also kidnapped. He passed on, left Lily, $50,000. Lily McIntosh is rich? Yeah. Oh, I know she's really happy. Well, she ain't very happy right now, Gospel Bill. Listen, what? they can't find Charlie anywhere. They're looking all over for him. Can't find him. Now, wait a minute. You know Charlie McIntosh. He's probably pulled a stunt. He's hiding out somewhere, Nicodemus. God, Bill, you have to be careful with the way you say his name. Somewhere, Nicodemus. And we transition immediately into the puppet side story again. You see what I'm talking about? We have, like, two minutes of content from the Gospel Bill show, and then it's just completely sidelined. Hey, look here. Here's a whole tub load of licorice. Well, I bet you this is Charlie McIntosh's. Now, you know that's fishy, because he wouldn't run off and leave that unless nothing bad happened. Mm-hmm. Oh! And there's just a furry now. Oh, gosh, Bill, someone threw this rock, and it hit me right here on the head, and that paper on there didn't cushion the blow any at all. Let oh. me see, Bargamas. Oh, he's got a big knot right there, Nicodemus. Do not. Do not. Mention the word not in front of the dog furry. No, that will only reap bad things for everybody. Trust me. Wait a minute. This is a ransom note. We have Charlie McIntosh. If you ever want to see him again, meet us at sundown tonight at the Willow Pass with $50,000 in small bills. No MasterCard or Visa accepted. 
Is nobody going to question why there's a furry here in the universe of the show? It's probably just a talking dog, but it's still a giant talking dog on its hind legs with opposable thumbs wearing clothes. I just had an epiphany. You know what this is? You know what this all is? These are just reenactors. These are just reenactors that gather together once a week and put on some new story based in the Old West for their own enjoyment. And one of their friends wanted to do it, but he was a furry, so they had to find a way to shoehorn him in. That's all this is. It's just a reenactment. So they get the ransom note and they're trying to figure out who, who could have possibly kidnapped, who could, hmm. Oh, we only have a handful of criminals around here. Let's see. Uh, we got Luther Bedlow and we got Luther Bedlow. Who else do we have? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the one criminal in town. We got to find out who these kidnappers are. Yeah. All right. Now, listen, Nicodemus, yeah. you probably better go to Miss McIntosh and just kind of console her and keep her calm while we're looking oh, for Charlie. Okay. I'll do her. I'll definitely console her. I'm sorry, this is a kid show. Next, we just kind of jump back and forth between Bedlow and his henchmen with Charlie at their hideout in Nicodemus at the store. It's so hard to provide a story summary when these story segments are so short. How's his mama doing? Yeah, she ain't doing too good. I just seen her outside and she ain't doing too good oh, at all. no. <laughs> Miss Lily. Oh, Miss Lily. Oh, we're so uh, sorry, Miss Lily. It's gonna be all right. They did not pay Miss Lily's actress enough for her to show her face. Ladies, ladies, ladies. Uh, I'm gonna shut the store down. We're gonna go minister to to Miss Lily because of Charlie being kidnapped. Can you come back tomorrow? Okay. Ladies, can y'all come back tomorrow? We're gonna go uh, preach to this lady who just had her child kidnapped and tell her that God's gonna handle everything while the sheriff just kind of bumbles about and doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Cool? All right, see y'all later. Bill and Furry go back to the sheriff's office because they've conceivably searched everywhere in the town for Charlie. But oh, wait a minute. What's the one place in town we haven't looked yet? The one place in town where he could be that we might have overlooked. Could it be the hideout of the criminal that we clearly know about? It's named Bedlow Manor. We've looked all over this town for that Charlie McIntosh. Yeah, and he's nowhere. They can't be very far away. Not more than half a day's ride, I'd say. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I remember seeing smoke coming out of the old Luther Bedlow place. There was a whole bunch of smoke just pouring out of the chimney. Yeah, but Bedlow hadn't used that place for years. If you see smoke coming out of the chimney of the residence of a convicted criminal who has not been seen and there was a recent kidnapping, hmm, nah. Yeah, that makes things even worse because if Luther Bedlow was involved in this, Charlie's in danger. Oh, no. But we can stop it. How? We can pray. All right. <laughs> you know, if Luther Bedlow's involved, that means Charlie's in danger. But well, we can fix this. Let's pray. If that ain't just perfect comedic stereotyping right there, I will eat my shirt. Of course, after praying, Bill's like, you know, maybe we should actually go check out the house, too. And so they piss off to go actually look at the villain's hideout. Amen. Amen. Let's go check out that cabin. And then, say it with me, everybody, another, another puppet, puppet segment. segment. Being actually smart for once, Bill and Furry, I don't remember his name, nor do I care to, make their way up to the manor. And Bedlow and his companion chloroform Charlie and stick his body in a barrel. We gotta get rid of this kid. What do we do, Miss Bedlow? What chloroform, do we do? Chloroform, right down there on the floor. Put it on that rag, and now cover his nose and mouth with it. All right, that'll knock him out. We'll stick him in this barrel right here. All right. All I'll right. put the skin over, Miss yeah, Bedlow. You keep your mouth shut. Bedlow, I want to talk to you. First of all, I want to ask you, what are you doing in a place like this? What are you doing in this shack? Sheriff, we're just here to celebrate the holidays. Garfield, Garfield, is he in there? Is he in there? Well, I didn't see him, Barkamaeus, but I know he's in there. His name is Barkamaeus. I did this to myself. Yeah, what are we going to do? I got a plan. Come with me. Right. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to protect Uncle Harvey no matter where he is. And we're back to the... Puppets. 
Bill and I am not repeating his name, I am just going to call him Furry still, decide to get Bedlow out of the house so they can search for Charlie. How do they do that? By setting the outside of the house on fire. Masterful planning, Bill. And of course, happy ending, Bill finds Charlie knocked out in the barrel and manages to bring him home barely conscious. <laughs> You found Charlie McIntosh. He sure did. Oh, who had him? Who had him? Oh, Luther Bedlow kidnapped that little kid. Luther Bedlow? What? Where did he have him? We looked all over town. And of course, Bedlow and his sidekick are punished in, well, I'll let Bill explain to you. Wait a minute, though. Where's Bedlow now? Oh, Bedlow? He just hanging around till I send him off to prison. I've never seen the world upside down before, Mr. Bedlow. This is kind of fun. I'm glad, as stupid as it is, that they included this. Otherwise, the way that Bill phrased that would make you think that they were hanged. I mean, I don't know how punishable of an offense kidnapping a child was back then, but people have been hanged for less. Golly, looking at the timestamp of the video, we're only at 19 minutes out of 27 minutes. What's the rest of the show about? Is it the puppet segment? No. The next four minutes is Bill standing in his office giving a sermon, essentially, telling a Bible story that only takes us to about 24 minutes in. The remainder of the show, it's just Nicodemus singing Hark the Herald Angels Sing for another few minutes. Aside from this line, If we don't get Charlie back, we may not have Christmas in Dry Gulch. And the fact that it took place around Christmas time. What did this have to do with Christmas? The title of the episode is the Christmas that almost wasn't. Did it relate to the puppet story? No, the puppet side story is just them wondering about whether their uncle is going to make it home for Christmas or not and retelling the Christmas story. So. So why set this as your Christmas episode at all? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, why is it every time I cover some sort of Christian content on this channel, I am either irate, broken, or a combination of both of those? Let's, let's wrap it up there. I don't want another Fruity Tales situation on our hands. Fruity Tales, Fruity Tales. And that is going to do it for this episode, folks. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any other weird TV shows, YouTube videos, channels, anything that you find weird, interesting, or funny that you want me to take a look at. As always, thanks y'all for supporting and sticking around, and I hope to see y'all in the next one. See ya!